So what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about Firebase. Then Greg is going to walk you through our streaming and querying API, which you can use to access your <coughs> device in real time without having to set up a server. Um, and then he's going to walk you through some sample code um, of an app that Matt built using Firebase and Electrium. So I'm going to start off by telling you about Firebase. So what is Firebase? Firebase is a real-time backend as a service. Um, so we use a data synchronization approach to let you store your data in the cloud and access it in real time without having to manage a server. Um, so the way this works is um, you just include the Firebase library in your application, and you can start sending data to the cloud. Um, and any clients that are connected to the Firebase app will be notified when the data changes in real time, so they won't have to press refresh. Um, so I'm going to go through um, two demos that will give you an idea of, of how Firebase works. So this is um, an HTML5 drawing application. Um, this is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We've included the Firebase library here, which gives you access to our cloud database. Um, so what's going on here is um, the pixel data in this canvas, when I draw the canvas, is being sent to the Firebase servers. Um, and whenever the data changes, any clients that are subscribed to this application are notified in real time. So to show you the magic of what's going on here, I'm going to pop it out in two separate tabs. Um, these tabs can be anywhere in the world. And so you'll see. When I draw in one tab, changes are being synced in real time. Um, any other clients that have this open. So um, if I were to turn the Wi-Fi off, all the changes would be synced locally. And then um, when the network connection synced up again, all the changes would sync again in real time. Um, so now I'm just going to show you one more example. Any questions so far? Can they both be writing or is one, is there only one in the paper? Yeah, they can both be running at the same time. So if they both make changes, would they both rethink when they were connected to the internet? Exactly. Yeah, so if I were to make changes on both canvases while it was offline, um, the changes would be synced again. Yeah? If one person changes the pixel of the light and another changes the black, who wins? So the last, the last person that writes the data will, um, will be sent to the server. Good question. Anything else? Okay, um, now I'm just going to go through this multiplayer Tetris example. So again, this is just all front-end code, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and what's going on here is instead of the pixel data being stored in Firebase, it's the application's game state. Um, so one of the things we noticed early on when building Firebase is that developers have a lot of trouble debugging code. It's hard to visualize what's going on when your data is changing, um, especially when you're working with the database and updating the data. Um, so we built a tool called Forge for this, which is our graphical debugger. Um, and so Forge shows you the current state of your data in real time as it's changing. So you can see here, if I go over here and move the piece around, you can see the X and Y coordinates changing down here. Um, so one thing to note about Firebase is every piece of data is accessed by a URL. So right here, this is the URL of the root of my Firebase. If I just want to see the URL of the first player, I can go to the root URL slash player zero. And then it also works like a normal REST API. So if I append JSON to the end of this, I get a JSON response back. Um, and Forge is also an editor. So if I wanted to cheat and delete the board for the first player, um, So that's a quick overview of Firebase. Any questions about Forge or either of the demos? All right, cool. Um, so now Greg is going to talk about our streaming and querying APIs. Uh, so Firebase has native clients for JavaScript, Java, and Objective-C. So that's uh, mobile devices and the web. Uh, but we also wanted to make Firebase accessible to uh, other platforms, for instance, Squirrel and Electric Imp. So we implemented um, these, the event source streaming API that browsers uh, can make use of, but also just regular REST clients can make use of to uh, send named events down from a server. Um, so what we did is we, we mirrored our REST API for put and patch, which lets you uh, update and overwrite data in Firebase, 
and we'll actually send those events down to the client so you can get notifications even if you're not on one of the supported platforms. Um, let's see. Uh, this is currently something we're, we're testing out and actually we would love to get feedback from you guys if you build something with it because um, this helps us make it better for use. Um, so here are some examples of just the, the event source API. Um, our server will send down an event like put or patch and some JSON data. It includes uh, both a path and the data that now exists at that path. As Sarah mentioned, each piece of data uh, maps to a URL. So the path will tell you what, uh, what URL has just changed, the data at what location has just changed. Um, and we have uh, some documentation, documentation in a gist, and if you go to the Bitly link, uh, you'll be able to get access to all of this. And then, um, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, and then Matt from Electric Imp um, helpfully did probably 99% of the work of using Firebase from Electric Imp already. Uh, he wrote the Firebase class that implements this protocol. And this is some example code that you might use in your application um, using his Firebase class and your Firebase URL, you can stream data from Firebase uh, using the stream API here. Um, here's the, the path to stream from and you set up your callbacks just like uh, a callback from getting um, data from the device or from another HTTP request and uh, and the, on the far side, we have an example of actually just doing a one-off read. If you uh, don't really care about streaming data and you just want to get a piece of data once, and that maps directly onto a REST API, so the, the .json endpoint that you saw earlier. And then finally um, is an example of writing Firebase. So if your uh, device changes something or your agent changes something and you want that data reflected in Firebase, <laughs> You can just do firebase.write and give it the path to the data that you would like to change. Um, so let's see if we can get our... Oh, um, and again, uh, these slides are all available at the Bitly link, and this is the documentation that you'll need for the REST API and the um, HTTP reference docs as well for uh, Electric Imp and Squirrel. Um, let's see. And, um, before I get to the demo, uh, we'll be around. Come talk to us if you have questions. Um, we're absolutely looking for feedback. Is this useful? Is, this, uh, is there something confusing? Um, come talk to us. And if you have questions, you can also email support. All right, let's get the demo going. So this is some code that I actually uh, just wrote. Um, I had not really done much hardware stuff before, um, but using Matt's Firebase class and um, the, uh, the electric imp here, I was able to write um, some quick code that would write data into Firebase whenever the uh, button on my device is pressed um, from the demo earlier. And then um, we have a web page here that's just showing the current state of the button. And this is all uh, streaming through Firebase. This is just some JavaScript code that's getting updated whenever I push or release the button. Um, and this is all available on GitHub. Um, and I will add the link to the slides so you guys can find it. Um, but this is just a, a simple demonstration. And actually, if you guys were to run this code on your devices right now, it would also show up here. Um, so this is a collaborative thing. You can talk between devices this way. You can talk between uh, device and web pages or mobile phones or whatever. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick example of what you can do with Firebase and Electric Imp. <coughs>